See you on the boat. Hey creatures! <laughs> this is an ugly monk. <laughs> that was such a beautiful day. We usually get to St. Kenneth's Island six, sometimes seven times every summer. We take our pilgrims there and we pray together to St. Kenneth. And um, this year, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, we've had to cancel all our pilgrimages. And so We've only managed to sail to Inch Kenneth, St. Kenneth's Island, once on the eve of the Domitian of the Mother of God. And so, because today or tomorrow, depending on when you see this video, we celebrate the Feast of St. Kenneth, we thought, what better way to celebrate this wonderful saint than to take you with us on our day trip to his cave and his monastery and his island. The videos and the photographs are more like home videos made for the family of the monastery, so we have our own memories of the beautiful times God has blessed us to spend together. But please forgive the low quality and try to enjoy it. We love you and we hope you are going to enjoy these crazy birds and seals and dolphins and absolutely strange islands. We start in the morning from Finifort, which is the port to Iona, and it takes about two hours and a half to sail to Inchkenneth, and then two hours and a half, of course, to sail back towards Finifort. And on the way there, especially on a beautiful sunny day, we did have a spectacular day, glory be to God, you see this beautiful, rich wildlife, lots of birds, shags and cormorants and gulls and, of course, puffins, whom everybody loves. And uh, if you're lucky and if God blesses you, minke whales and dolphins and such a wealth of wildlife, both on the way towards Inchkanath and coming back. And then, of course, you get to see the beautiful coasts of Mull, the so-called wilderness, which is an area of Mull which to this day is uninhabited. And for us, uh, Christian Orthodox, that is a very important area because there are two caves there where we know that hermits lived in the first millennium. First, there is the large McKinnon's Cave, which, if I remember correctly, is the deepest cave in the Hebrides where a community of monks lived in the first millennium. And then a bit further from McKinnon's cave, where the community lived, there's a very tiny little uh, cave called the Priest's Cave. And in the Priest's Cave, you can still see to this day a sort of um, square rock, which is known as the Priest's Altar. That is where the priest, the spiritual father, of the community in the larger cave, lived on his own. You can only access the priest's cave by boat. There is no way to get inside by land. And of course, on the other side, looking towards North America, over the ocean, you see Staffa and Langa and Flada and all the Treshnish Isles with the wealth of marine life and bird life that they are famous for. I think the highlight of our excitement, worldly excitement for the day, was when this entire army of dolphins decided that we had lost our way and um, they took it upon themselves to guard us and to lead us the right way towards St. Kenneth's Island. They were in such mood for fun and they entertained us for about 15 minutes. We stopped the boat just to enjoy them. But we discovered that it's much more fun if we race them, because then they try to outrace us, and it becomes this just hilarious game between the boat and the dolphins. 
And so under the supervision and the leadership, we slowly, slowly approached the island and we could see it in the distance. When you're here, it's quite obvious how influential the Egyptian fathers of the desert have been on the saints of the Isles. And it's also obvious why they were so open to this influence. Just looking at the ocean, you could almost see the desert that they saw, because many of them called the ocean their desert. And um, they tried to replicate the experience of prayer and the spiritual struggles of their um, fellow ascetics from the Egyptian desert, which of course is extremely relevant to us Orthodox Christians today, because at the time the Desert Fathers were part of the Orthodox Church. You just sail along and you hear nothing but the waves and um, the wind hitting the boat, the wood of the boat, and you almost physically feel the respect that these saints had for the ocean, the love, the, the fearful love, the respectful love they had for nature in general. And that is something we desperately need to learn from them today. They related to nature as God's way of talking to them, not as deep and uh, closely as the truth of the gospel reveals Christ to them, but in a more personalized, day-by-day -day sort of way. They knew that the God of the gospel, the one who controls the storms and the winds, could bless or not that they should start work today or tomorrow, that they should set sail today or not, that they should catch fresh fish today or not. So, that Christ, which is perfectly revealed through the Gospels alone, and uh, could never have been revealed so perfectly, so fully by nature, and as proof, you know, no one has ever been saved by nature. We needed the word of the Gospel. We needed the living word of Christ to find our salvation. And yet, although nature is not a perfect revelation of God, it can still be used by God on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, to, to guide us, to lead us. We, by placing ourselves under obedience to God, may, can decide to accept nature as God's will for us. But that is something the saints understood in such a um, perfect, innocent way, and something we have corrupted so horribly. But we are never lost, and by the grace of God it's never too late. So let's look at these saints and learn from them. As we approach Inch Kenneth, you begin to distinguish this strange structure that the island has. It's been shaped throughout millennia by the ocean storms to the point that today it looks like one larger island and then several small ones. Once we reach Inch Kenneth, we get to the actual island and off the island when we leave on a dinghy because the water is too shallow. On the island, you can still see the ruins of the old monastery. This is a second millennium Benedictine monastery, which was built on the ruins, on the foundation of the first millennium monastery, established by those monastics who decided to live close to St. Kenneth. Now, about St. Kenneth, I haven't mentioned anything, and I'm not going to give you a full biography of him, but it's enough to know that he was a very complex and a giant of spirituality himself. He was highly educated, he was a student and disciple of St. Finian, and he is counted, like St. Columba, for example, among the Twelve Apostles of Ireland. He was a major abbot himself and the founder of many monasteries. He was a great missionary. He did missionary work on Iona, he did missionary work on Mull, Inch Kenneth, uh, South West, and many of the Hebridean Isles. But beyond all this activity, he remained 
a hermit at heart, which is why shortly after he settled on Iona to live with St. Columba, he decided with the blessing of St. Columba to pursue this calling of a hermit vocation. He lived on Inchkenneth for a while, and then he returned to Ireland. He continued his work for a few more years, and then he withdrew in order to die in peace as a hermit again. He's very similar in that to St. Cuthbert, for example, who abandoned his bishop's seat to die as a hermit on Fan Island. Or he's very similar to St. Ninian as well, who, although he was the bishop of Whithorn, he still used his hermit cave by the sea. And even St. Columba himself, who so craved for peace and quiet that when he died, God finally granted that prayer to him by bringing in a storm over Iona and prohibiting all pilgrims and everyone else except his fellow monks from weeping over his body and from being present to his funeral. From the ruined Benedictine monastery, you can see the ancient graveyard, which is second only to Iona. Beautiful, beautiful tombstones are preserved here. And this is one of those graveyards which were used by Scottish royalty and other people who wanted to be buried in Holy Land. From the cemetery and the monastery, as you look back towards Mull, if you walk in the direction of the coast, there is the actual cave where St. Kenneth lived as a hermit. He kept his distance from the actual community, just like St. Brandon kept his distance from the monastery he had founded on his island, and uh, just like the priest I've mentioned in the wilderness of Mull, he had kept his distance from the community he was guiding in the spiritual life. We prayed in the monastery, we prayed in the cave, we prayed in the boat, we prayed all day long. We even prayed with the birds and the seals and the dolphins, blessing them and giving thanks to God for making this day so, so beautiful. On the way back, of course, we stopped to see Fingal's cave and because the ocean was so peaceful and kind to us, we managed to get inside Fingal's cave. And then, yes, Tired, but so happy and feeling so blessed. We returned back towards Mull and um, we saw towards the end of the day the shadows, the blessed shadows of St. Columba's Cathedral on Iona. I hope you enjoyed this uh, home video of our day pilgrimage to St. Kenneth's Island. We are very grateful that we got there, even if it was just once this summer. We have managed, by the grace of God, to pray in these holy sites for the last decade. And we are grateful beyond, beyond the limits of our skin and our soul to God for allowing us to do this, and to you all for making this possible. After, um, what was it, five to six hours of facing the wind and the ocean we were dead tired so we got back to the monastery we made ourselves a cup of tea or a cup of warm cocoa and um, we gave thanks to god for this beautiful beautiful blessed day may saint kenneth bless all of us dear ones remember these saints Remember them and keep their memory alive. Pray to them because they are absolutely ready to help and they are so relevant to our world today. Read their lives, include them in, the, in your rule of prayer and you will see, I promise you on their behalf, you will see how quick to hear and to help they are. May they bless all of us dear ones. Amen, amen, amen.